another video. Um, so I just think about gaslighting because I don't really, sometimes I don't know what it is apart from the undermining of somebody deliberately in a narcissistic way to make themselves doubt themselves and things. I had one client that sort of raised it jokingly and it's probably a lot more easier if someone is has an impairment of some sort, like visual, hearing, whatever, you could say, you could make up stuff and then try to get them to believe, doubt themselves all the time. Um, I had something yesterday and basically I had uh, the client next of kin and she said, and I knew before previously, she was saying I can't help that, I was in these dates or whatever. So anyway, she said she's leaving the room. She said, um, oh, I better leave the room so I don't have any more dates. And I said, oh, that sounds a good idea. And I didn't say, it wasn't just like, it, it was like cheeky, but it's not really super sarcastic. Really. I said, that sounds a good idea. No, she said something else. I think she said something else like, I think she's going. This is because of the, the other woman to go to the toilet. And then um, um, her mother said, um, she turned around and said, you what? And something like that. And then she had to try to explain it. And then it just sort of snowballed a little bit. It's like, um, yeah, just, you know, like I just said, all, all I said was, um, you know, basically that's a good idea. But she thought, oh, what, you mean a date? Like going out for a date or something? She got kind of flustered and confused. And I, I think that's partially because Person, when a person's brain listens into things, it's got these different algorithms going on. So one part looks for a threat, one part's interpreting them socially, what that means. Another is where you want to take the conversation. All these things are going on in the background. So if you say things that maybe that might trigger something, like somebody likes you or whatever, or they don't like you, then if they heard the word date or whatever, then something, the, the reverse of that means. Anyway, she felt like she was a bit slightly embarrassed, I think. She was going to head upstairs anyway, so she doesn't want to hang around with her mum's getting personal care. And um, I just found it amusing. I was thinking, well, how did she misinterpret all this stuff? And, and to be honest with men, men's brains, they, don't, they tend to try not to take things too seriously because sometimes we can take things too seriously. <laughs> That's why, uh, you know, some situations we can be kind of like quite engaged with and others we won't. Depending on what they, that means, like in, if it's an interest, if it's a threat, you know, if it's something external, really, external matters we focus on. Why well, maybe maybe we're focusing more on internal matters like communication, organisation, what needs to be done, and it's usually things that have been done before, but maybe in a certain pattern or improve on that. Um, it might be insta instigate some new ideas. So it's kind of like this gaslighting type thing, and I, I just found it amusing, really. Um, because, well, because I'm because men men's brains are predatory, and I think women are in their own way. But it's kind of when they, when someone basically they, they show themselves up, it's amusing. But then equally, when guys because guys try to dominate women, they dominate women physically with their strength or the size or whatever. We're kind of imposing whether we want to be or not because we're just twice the size of most women. That's that's really how it works in density or muscle or whatever. Not always, but there's a, there's a vast amount of the population that are uh, men that are physically um, designed stronger for, for say, height of, if you've got an average height of a woman compared to that. So um, so when a man hurts himself or, or, or flips over or does something physical, that could be quite funny to women. Like, I don't know, he hits himself in the nuts or whatever because he's this strong blow is now being disempowered by this thing. What's doing there? Um, yeah. So that's why they might, it might be funny, but the thing is for the guy, it's hard to enjoy the, you can't enjoy the joke while you're in pain. Um, because he's vulnerable, now he has to become more serious and focused because he, he, he could potentially be jumped to that point, anything could happen because he's, he, he, you know, he's at a weak point really. Uh, the other thing I've come across is coercive control. Um, I've seen it before in, a, in another client because he recovered from a stroke and he's, um, basically his wife seems to have him on wrapped around a finger, you know, he couldn't, he couldn't open Christmas presents, had to be put away, 
because he had to wear his shoes out first before he gets a new Christmas present. She probably told her told her family what present to get him. Anyway, when she passed away, he was less left in a bit of disarray because he didn't know what to do himself. Because he'd been used to being controlled by this woman. And he, 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 when you, if you see it at that stage, you think, oh my God, how did he get to that point? Because he had things that were locked away in cupboards. He had things that he couldn't do. These things, you know, all these sorts of restrictions, and they were all lifted. So it's just kind of like threw him into something else. Now I've got another, I've got another client, and um, you know, I, I, I was wondering if he was really controlling her partner. Um, she's got some mental health issues, um, and she had a breakdown in the past. When he passed away, she, it seemed to get worse, and it could be because she was grieving. But she never showed, she never showed externally any grieving. I think she just cry at night, but she doesn't show emotions outwardly. That could be a part of co coercive control as well. That you know, don't be so silly, don't, don't you do that, don't you cry, don't you, you know, it's this kind of. Um, so you kind of you end up, um, I don't know, like a Russian doll. It's kind of like you've got this ex exterior part of you that's um, has to be kept in a certain way. You don't show any emotions externally, so that might create this hard outer shell, and the inner, inner ones actually crying out in turmoil. But the, the thing that's got me the most is, I mean, I know that she might have uh, mental health issues, and, and whether they happened when she was a child, whether she was always born with them, or, or whatever. I mean, like I said, they got worse when her, pa her partner passed away. But there's another thing that she does as well, like she's asking me for permission to go to bed. Now I can't help it, like. So I don't know really. Oh, of course you can. Of course you get it. It's almost like this is the most silliest question you can ask me, and I'm not making nasty fun of her. It's just that it doesn't really matter. That's what I'm trying to tell her. It doesn't matter when you go to bed. If you go to bed, you know, long I'm there for half an hour, so you can you can go any time in that period of time. But, and then she's asking me if she can if if I um, want the TV turned off. I was like, what? Yeah, I'm not even watching the TV. When I turn up. But I realised it's because of the male influence in her life up to that point. I mean, I knew that he had things like when he came home from work, no one was allowed in the front room. He would need half an hour to unwind, and he would catch up with the news and a lot. But no kids, his wife, anyone goes in the front room for half an hour to work. And I thought that was strange. And so I think that it, it, this kind of micro control in this over time has caused a lot of damage. So when he got into the relationship in the past, he said to us, because he, I mean, I understand if you're the strongest uh, player in the group, you take on certain responsibilities. So he said, well, I go to work and you go home, you know, you'll be at home and have children and raise them. But it just, it's kind of like a feeder or whatever. He just, I mean, he had as many kids as he could with her and he kept her at home. And so she never really branched out. She could have been selected based on her background because she didn't. She doesn't really have uh, uh, an education. Um, you know, there's sorts of bar there's there's but understanding barriers. She's only watched certain programs, so she doesn't like. I can understand you don't like certain programs, but she doesn't understand them. They're just so confusing. Like you see, like um, a wildlife program or something else. She's like, what on earth's this all about? You know, it's all like. Um, well, you should know. However, you know, she's, she's, she's vulnerable, she's ageing and so on, and it could all be a part of just the ageing process. But it made, me th it made me think about that. Is that like kind of a toxic MGTOW relationship? Like he's constructed it, a lot of people like to consider traditional relationships, but it's been in such a way that it's, it's done her harm. So maybe he hasn't seen the way he's become because he wanted to have most control he could have. It's all right having power, but you've got to know how to share it, basically. You know, I, most men wouldn't mind a woman that's very really kind of loyal and very really supportive, but it could get over the top. But how it depends on the character. If someone's submissive or have that kind of, you know, I don't, I mean, don't mind, men don't mind if women want to take care of men. And then in reverse, they think, well, I'm going to do something nice for her. That's normally how it works, I guess. Um, so, yeah, that's just sort of things to, to reflect. And I'm sure there's the opposite in, you know, like, men, like I say, men, men get controlled in that coercive way and then the reverse of that, um, which I've covered, which is good. And so crypto, quick summary of the crypto. Uh, Dogezilla is doing well. It's got a kind of anti... Um, I guess they're setting a standard for, against rug pulls, that's the idea of it, because the bloke who's... Um, 
the producer of it has experienced that so it's it's run up there are lots of other zilla coins and dodezilla it's a dodezilla.com it's a dodezilla.io and that's something else i don't know what that's to do with it just seems weird they've got both the same names um, what else is going cat coin i've done really well on that i've got 10k at the moment um, and that's because it, I made that profit, made a massive chunk. It was 25, but it's gone down. It's going to surge again in the future. It's just uh, every time they complete something, the roadmap or new product comes out or something, they will go up in price. And using that, the, the, well, basically, success breeds success. So there's other people that will copycat slightly, but make their own thing. So this pandagirl.io will be coming out. And so they're at pre-launch stage, so I'm, at the moment I'm doing play to earn on something called uh, Crypto Bomber and um, so I make a load of money on that and I cash it in and then I funnel that funds into these new projects. Which is cool, what else is going on money wise? I think so safe moon are okay, long term things, there's not a lot going on there. That's it. Um, yeah, so some of these play to earn mechanisms help because they always make me money. I mean, the, the bomb and wine I've just got to put on. However, initially you have to invest more in this play to earn, so it's a case of getting in there early. And when you're looking for projects, you've got to find something unique that makes it stand out because there's lots of cheap projects out there that don't really have that and they could become rough ones. Right, Depending on how it works out, but yeah, but definitely making a bit of money on things is good. And just use them as banks, so we use them bank money in it. A bit like a discussion the other day, he said if you made a billion would you cash out? I said no. He said what? It's a bank. It's just, that's how you take out what you need and leave it in there. Otherwise you just crash the project. It's like shares, if you went up, suddenly everyone cashed out, the shares would drop through the ground. So you have to protect your investment. Anyway, let's sign off, have a great one, let's be soon. Bye.